Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Beyond the Summit. It's time for game one of our WEC Grand Finals. I'm LD. I'm joined here by Winter and Fogged, and we will be casting Evil Geniuses versus Cloud9. For those who are confused about the format, it's very simple. It's a best of three Grand Finals, but each game is basically a best of three. So right now, Cloud9 is starting with a, a one game advantage, you can say, and that means that EG will need to win two best of threes in a row in order to take this series. Otherwise, Cloud9 will walk away if they can just take one of those two, if they need the second one, with the lion's share of the prize money, $90,000 out of the $168,000 prize pool. With that said, the draft is underway. Let's go ahead and hop on into it. Winter, Fog, guys, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Winter, are you, are you actually here? Stop. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> we even have a working mic, Winter. This is like way better than all of our casts the past three days. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, Winter, as the as the draft unfolds, we didn't actually get your input, but um, quickly, I just want to put you on the spot here and get your prediction recorded. Who's going to take the series? Uh, I think EG is much stronger, though, because from all, all the games that they played in the loser's bracket, they look more solid. And C9 seems to be... I don't know, man. I just feel EG would take it. If C9, C9 has a chance because they have a B, BO, uh, I mean BO3 advantage, if it's like an even game, I think EG is much more likely to win. But now it's sort of 50-50 because C9 has a BO3 advantage. Okay. And and with that said, guys, the draft has already begun, so let's talk specifically about these picks and bans. We see a Razor first pick, the Death Prophet, Clockwork Reply, and, and then EG goes straight into a Sven. So walk me through these picks and, and what the reasoning is. It's pretty interesting grabbing the Sven this early. I kind of, I mean, I can kind of see why, the movement speed, of course, but the bonus armor from Warcry can't really be overlooked. Once it's maxed, the cooldown's quite low, and that buff actually really helps a lot versus Death Prophet. Yeah, and uh, I, I, I think the main reason is I, the Sven is a hero, like he said, like Yanni said, a lot of armor, you can tank Death Prophet, and you need to kill Death Prophet with burst, because Sven is yeah. the burst. So basically you stand in front and you kill him as soon as possible before he does a lot of damage. And Winter, yesterday we saw the Sven plus, uh, plus the Dazzle combo, so you had the yeah. ridiculous armor bonus for your team. Like, there were heroes that would have like 50 plus armor if Sven got off Om his ult, or uh... Omni Knight. Omni Knight, please. 1,000 yeah. armor. <laughs> yeah, you, wh why pick Sven and Dazzle when you can just get accomplish the same objective with one hero? That yeah, is... no shock seeing Cloud9 ban out the Dazzle, though. That's a really good point, though, that armor thing is really something not to overlook that people don't really think about too often. Yeah, and so last time EG ran the Sven, it was for fear. He actually rushed a Blink Dagger. He went Tread straight into Blink. Uh, we didn't see any of that, like, that greedier style of, like, Dreamhack two Winter 2012 play, and, well, the game has evolved a lot since then, but... Fear Sven was impressive. He was active on the map, and um, he's really been performing well in this tournament overall. I'm just curious to see if Cloud9's gonna ban out Darkseer here. Yeah, they ran the Sven Darkseer the other day. That was very strong. There's still the Ayo, though. I, I think Ayo and Sven is still very good together. Yeah, of course. EG, I haven't seen EG run Wisp very often. Is there any reason why? I don't really uh, think so. I mean, I think they just maybe prioritize other heroes. I'm sure it's just in their arsenal. Well, now the Darkseer will be banned, so... I don't, think, I, I don't so. think PPD plays the, the Ayo, right? So when they actually pick Ayo, they can't actually pick Midnight... I mean, Enigma to, in their lineup. So they always want to keep the option open that they can, any, they can always pick Enigma on the Dire side. Maybe sometime we'll see, like, a Wisp PPD and then, like, a Ursa Zai, and they can do, like, that stuff. I don't know. Yeah, they picked Ursa, EG did, earlier in this tournament, and it was actually a fear jungling Ursa, and they gave the lane to one of the supports to get some early levels. Yeah, they do some, they really do some clever things with their lanes, and just, it actually throws people off so much. Winter, this is on the, you've talked about at length, is this Enigma on the Dire side. Cloud9 do not want to give that away, so, uh, wanting it also for themselves, they, they'll grab it here, but it has a, it's a double-edged sword, and, well, not double-edged sword, but it's a, killing birds with, Two birds with one stone by picking yeah, the Enigma. I think the Enigma pick is good versus the Sven as well. Like when in the old days when you always pick Sven, you always see like two counters towards him, like either a black hole or the perch from Shadow Demon that goes through BKB. These two heroes are the most annoying for the Sven to deal with. And like the Shadow Demon can also protect the Death Prophet in this situation for C9 if they want to go for Shadow Demon. Lanes look uh, fairly flexible here still for, for EG. Uh, they do have the Sven Marana Razor and these heroes, all three of them, can pretty much go anywhere. Generally, we see Sven getting safe lane farm early on, but still not entirely sure how they want to approach this early game. And generally, when we see the Enigma pick, like v Vici Gaming, for example, they went 
really aggressive to try and shut them down. We saw that earlier in this tournament. Yeah. Do you think it'll be? A, do you think there's a possibility of a support Sven? What do you think, Yanis? I don't know. I think it could be okay. Maybe. Uh, I'm thinking maybe they do some tri lane with the Sven because the opponent yeah, is Enigma, and and one of the supports probably the Mirana will just constantly stack the Ancient since it's nearer there, and they'll just play from there, and the Sven will just take the stack after that and get really really farm. Maybe just max the cleave first over the stun. I don't know, so you can clear it early. So super economy oriented Sven is what you're was is what you're thinking. Yeah, America does that a lot. <laughs> Will EG do that is the question. I'm really sad I don't have a hexagon on the side. At least I can look at the stream for hexagons. Yeah, we're we're giving you your fix of production value there. <laughs> right now the the stream likes COD 9's fix overall. If the if the size of the hexagon is how you judge it a lot better. They've got a, this. a lot more push. Hmm. Cloud9, fourth pick now coming out. They they have one support in the Enigma, but well, calling it a support is, is sometimes a stretch with this team. Or so, um, as it, it will pretty much get farmed for AUI 2000 on the level of like a, a three and a half or even three position hero if left unchecked. But they'll get this hard support now on the Shadow Demon, which does match up extremely well against Sven. So you mentioned Enigma can control Sven quite well, and I'm actually looking at three heroes that are very good yeah. against him. Actually, plus all four, power, I would say. Plus Power Cox. Remember that. You have the cogs, you have the Death Prophet who's very fast. So if you can't kill her with just the burst damage, then she'll be able to kite you. Enigma, who's great against melee carries, and now the demonic purge of Shadow Demon does not remove the ultimate of Sven, which it used to do to a while back, but uh, does still slow him down quite a bit. I'm I'm thinking he needs the IO now, otherwise he's just gonna be kited everywhere. They go for Lich. Hmm. Is this just to counter the Enigma pick and like make up for the laning stage? It's also Frost Armor against the DP. Yep. So it's all about the DP ultimate so far, you would say? Uh, half, half for the ultimate, half for the black hole, so... <laughs> yeah, they get a good way to counter it now with the Chain Frost and... I think that was a good pick. I was gonna say, um, I think it's gonna be either Avenge or Lich, and they actually went for the Lich instead of uh, Avenge. Cancelling that hole is actually so important if since they're doing the uh, core Sven, because they would've... If, like, the Enigma just gets BKB and he holds that Sven, he can get taken down super easily. Final ban will come out for both teams. Cloud9, um, probably going to ban... A, well, I guess the question is, is who's going to be the support here out of the Sven Mirana? Um, uh, the Mirana, I think, because Sven, It'll, yeah. Sven is much better at the core, I feel. Yeah, for sure. I completely agree. So then we need Universe's hero, and they actually banned the Jakiro, which Universe did play yesterday. Though, a, a month or two back, he would not have called that like a traditional Universe hero, but... I mean, he can play anything, and he's been really solid for them in this tournament. See, I tried to watch that game, because I was trying to do a little bit of homework of watching, like, you know, just seeing what was going on, because I missed a bunch of the games, and your VOD doesn't work, because you're dropped the whole game. <laughs> jo hey, Joint Dota also cast it, so that's that's a lazy excuse, Yanis. I, I was supposed to have two hours until the game, man. Okay. Yeah, we, we have swapped out that computer, so uh, <laughs> for those who suffered through the broadcast yesterday, guys, I do apologize for that. It seems stable so far. I'm not going to promise anything until we until we get into the game and have a game or two under our belts. But so far, it seems okay. Yeah, we had some uh, technical issues yesterday. And now EG will ban out the Viper. Cloud9 do have room for another core here. And, well, a Turtle Envy's hero, probably the one being picked up. They actually banned Jakiro, too. <laughs> they didn't want to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. That universe played it yesterday. So. That's... I g yeah, that's ah, interesting. It is a very interesting band, though. Tinker. Ah, oh, the Eternal Envy Tinker. He played this hero the last time I saw it with Bone Seven, and Bone Seven was on Nature's Prophet, and he did his, you know, his Null Talisman's Blade Mail, Blink Dagger, then back into Maelstrom build, and just, you know, early game very aggressive at fighting, and then much later on just constantly split pushing, got the, got the Necro book, and. Um, ended up basically Eternal Envy just like kept all the lanes pushed in and Bone 7 just slowly whittled their base down. They're very patient, Cloud9. Like, he would hide in the trees so for like two minutes at a time. It's so greedy though to have the Tinker at this pick. You already know EG probably can run a very strong, very strong lanes already from the start. And, you yeah. and having the Tinker plus Enigma means your lanes are going to be very, very weak. I'm worried. Yeah, I'm really worried for C9. I don't. Underst I don't really know how they're gonna make space for this Death Prophet and Tinker. I feel like it's gonna be. They, they just need to make sure like the ancients are blocked. Like for EG, that's no. the main thing, so that the Tinker has no way to come back after a horrible laning phase. 
Exactly. This clockwork. Bone Seven's just gotta. I feel like if just gotta be crazy in the offlane in order to do anything in this game. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking probably at this point maybe EG can pick Prophet on their side if they want to run something that's very strong in the lanes they can do like maybe Mirana roaming trying to block the Ancients and Lich and Sven are off lane maybe Prophet safe lane and they can just keep being aggressive on the Tinker's lane or the DP's lane something like that and then the Enigma's got a tough choice does he try to help these lanes or does he just sacrifice them and focus on getting his farm early on that'll There's be the sent there's still also a centaur in the pool, isn't there? The disengage. Oh, yeah, there's still, yeah, still a centaur. Okay, they go for sinking. Sinking. Interesting. Hmm. So. Is that a universe sinking? It's sinking, so it might be sinking versus clockwork. A good 1v1 matchup for melee, and then triple lane. Or dual lanes. Yeah. So you it's favor pretty... sinking in the matchup if you just get like a point in caustic early, or? Yeah, I think Sanking will have a better time because you can always make sure that you have more creeps than a clockwork so you, you are not afraid of the battery assault because you have more creeps on your side. So with this Lich pick and now the, the core Sand King, EG, not really the most aggressive draft but uh, in the in the early laning stage, but still can have a good economy from the Lich denies. They can have very good dual lanes though, like Lich plus Sven and Sand King and Mirana. Like this dual, this, the, both, both of these dual lanes are very powerful. Yeah, that's yeah. they definitely can get kills within the lanes, but uh, it'll mainly just be the Mirana who looks for the early roams if they want to rotate around the map. I guess with the Nature's Prophet, they would have had a little bit more flexibility. Actually, Zai so playing the Sand universe King. Universe on... What? Universe Sven, and then it's... Fear Mirana. Uh, so what does, it, what does this mean? The lane it's is... like a three. Hmm. Well, as we wait to see what EG's got up their sleeves, we should introduce the teams now. We have Zai on the support, Sand King, the boots first picked up. Universe on the Sven, that puts Fear under the Marana, as mentioned. PPD will be handling the Lich, that puts Arteezy up on an island for now as the Razor. On the side of Cloud9, leading by one best of three in this series of potentially three best of threes, we have Pylai Dai handling the Shadow Demon. Bone7 will be playing his Clockwork, which did a lot of work at TI4. Eternal Envy on the Tinker going mid. AI 2000, the Enigma, and that leaves in the off lane. Actually, Fada playing the Death Prophet, so Cloud9 trying to kind of anticipate EG's lanes and make some adjustments. So I mean, if the, Tinker, yeah, if the Tinker is bought, he's just gonna die repeatedly. They need to put the Clockwork there. Out of their three costs, the Death Prophet, the Clockwork, and the Tinker, only the, thing, the Clockwork can afford to suffer early on. The other two needs to have a very good start. Is this gonna work against EG, though? Because we already see Fear rotating up towards the top lane, and and Zai so making his way there as well, and this is the duo that can... Uh, probably their best killing duo out of all their lanes early on. But what do you think is the reason being... having the Mirana as a core this game? Yanis, any, any thoughts on that? I'm trying to figure that. Honestly, I mean, I guess it works out, there's... but... Hmm. I'm really, I don't, I'm not really too sure. I think it could have yeah. gone either way, but th this is just the decision they tried, they wanted to do. I guess I don't know. It's, it's strange, but I feel like it could work fine either way. Yeah, it just puts a little more pressure here on EG to to find kills like around that mid game mark where Sven maybe gets his blink dagger, Sandkin picks his up, and if they're just trading farm evenly against the Tinker Death Prophet Enigma, that is not a particularly favorable matchup for EG heading towards the late game. And we are seeing PPD moving through this radiant jungle for now, rotating. Towards the bottom lane, so they will run the Sven Lich dual lane that you guys mentioned, and then it's also going to be the Sand King Marana. So I will begin pulling for now, but actually misses the aggro. Oh, gets two of the creeps in. And really no pressure on the Enigma. I think that's the, the big thing to point out here is AUI 2000. There were some wards dropped in his jungle, but nobody's actually threatening to gank him early on. I think C9, I think they, both teams reacted very accordingly. I think the lanes are like pretty good for C9 though. Yeah, I agree. I think the lanes are very good. Like, in in this in this way of laning, they can make sure that the Tinker and the Death Purple have a good start. Clockwork can suffer a bit, and it, it's fine for him. He's gonna have his boots already, so he will do absolutely fine. He just needs to make sure he gets his levels and just tries to control the rune, and maybe even try to stack the camps on the left for the Tinker, if if he if he can. Yeah, the Ancients have not been warded off for now, and and the Tinker can definitely farm them. We've seen Death Prophet players at times will. Also take advantage of those stacks, though it's not nearly as effective as it is for you Tinker. Need, I think you need at least second point in your ultimate to be able to do like multiple stacks effectively. The first level of ultimate is pretty difficult. Gotcha. 
And all, well, Eternal Envy for now in the mid lane, having a tough time here up against Arteezy, who's already 7-3 and three to the 4-0 and oh Tinker, but that is where the stacks can help turn things around. Zai looking for the 2-minute rune will find a double damage. As Pilei Dai walks towards him, we'll spot this one out. There are boots up on Zai, none on Pi, but he can't really get in range. And meanwhile, I, I'm, if I'm Cloud9, I'm, I am happy that AUI 2000 is being left unchecked. Already hits level 3 at 2 minutes. On track for that level 7 at 5 or so, and with the Sol Ring picked up, we'll be able to free farm here as long as they don't go for ganks. Which, to be honest, with a, a support lich in the lane, not much chance of them killing off Enigma for now. Man, Envy's really starting to fall behind in this mid lane, though. It's going to start being more and more difficult for him to lane. Is this just a Tinker disadvantage matchup, or is he just getting outplayed, would you say? Uh, his block was quite bad early on, unfortunately. So Arteezy got a few free last hits and uh, did, E didn't did step up, if, but... Did you see if the Enigma actually helped with one creep in the middle? I didn't actually quite... I didn't actually I think check if he top. helped block. I saw him heading towards top earlier, but he, I know he denied a creep mid, but he didn't block with it. Okay. And Envy just lost all his damage. He's got a laser for that creep. Yeah, but but I, I still think naturally Razor has the advantage, so yeah. Tinker will have to just find jungle or Ancients to recover after that. Yeah, it's not so bad, as long as he doesn't die by any means. Yeah, one of the better recovery heroes, and they are making up for it elsewhere with, with the Enigma. Hits level yeah, 4 now, still on sure. good pace. And if you look at the other lanes as well, Mirana, the core is only 7 CS, and the DP is doing a lot better on the top lane at what, I think this CS top now. lane is going to go pretty well for C9, honestly. Yeah, like you guys mentioned the killing power of Mirana and Sandkane, and they definitely have it in most matchups, but with two ranged heroes and, and disruption, it's very difficult to actually fight yeah, a kill. And not to mention, if you try to go on the Shadow Demon, the DP can just silence the Mirana so you cannot follow up with the arrow. And if you try to go on the DP, he just disrupts the DP. So you well, can, if he, you if he skills the silence, yeah. Oh, yeah, Envy. if he wants to. This damage is, is painful, and he's giving it all away. Just to go for some additional right clicks, he actually allows the max damage to be stolen. And Arteezy will be freely last hitting these creeps. Hits 20 and 11. Still no, still no Ancient stacks for him, and with the Enigma pick, they won't be stacking the jungle early. As Bone Seven makes his move through the lane, heading. Well, let's see if we can get him. If we can get him with this history, that'd I think be pretty he actually big. Might be a, yeah, I think he actually might have a very good chance of getting him. Yeah. Uh oh, Arteezy's okay, coming out, and he doesn't have boots. The Hastern's still up for a few more seconds. Plasma Field, just out of range to hit Bone Seven, but he will He's back off at the end. I think they know because the ward here actually doesn't see anything, and Clockwork is missing. I th yeah, and he was just—I mean, he was just playing safe till his bottle got there as well. That was just smart, smart positioning, smart play. Wow, Universe's first Fen game. I don't like the way that mace sounds, the fear set mace. It sounds weird when it hits creeps. Is that the the is this the fear set? The yeah, oh yeah the, the fear mythical maker. weapon. EG Pro Gear. Or free to play pro gear, I guess. Those those things sold really well by the way. I don't know I don't know if you guys heard heard about that, but uh, of I, they did. I heard how I heard how well Fear sold and I can only imagine how well Dendi sold and yeah, they, they did pretty well. To say the least. Of course Enigma's they deserve gonna it, but... Enigma's gonna pop level 6, so maybe he's gonna try and help as soon as he gets his boots on with the first black hole. And Sanky yeah. is trying to do what Enigma's doing for the past 5 minutes. He's starting to do his own jungle right now, so that he can get his dagger except. But he does it yeah. a lot slower, and, and EGR looking. Although oh, AUI... They see the Sven. They see the Sven here. This is a difficult kill for EG. I don't think they can get it even if they stun him. Like, there's really nothing to prevent him from turning, and there's no chain frost to burst him down quickly. It's not a good position for them to go for an engagement either. Even though there's only, like, Shadow Demon maybe with the TP, and yeah, she, SD has a TP, but that's not a good spot to really go for unless it's a sure kill. Yeah, and Aoi's gonna stack the Ancients and probably move towards the top to try and take the tower now, since he has Black Hole. But he just, he can get his boots along the way, though, at top. Yeah, still hasn't deployed the smoke, but he can use it if he wants to go for fear. I, I don't think he's gonna use it, he's just gonna go up get his boots and try to wait for a timing to gank. Oh, Pi might actually get bat in, a con in a bad spot here. Oh, there's a barrel strike, and the arrow can follow this one up, but doesn't find him and ends up retreating out as AUI makes his move. They will have Death Prophet ult soon, but if they want, if he wants to skill it, but not just yet for Fada. Pi is searching. He's and Black Hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was going for it. <laughs> yeah, hey, that, that, oh, he that is a caught. first blood. It would be worth it. Nope. Oh, he's They're still looking. He's in, a, he's in a bad spot here. He might get caught. Fear is coming just a bit too close, and oh, now Pi wraps around. They're going to go for the disruption. Yeah, they can down. channel the black hole in advance, and they will do so. Following it up with a Crypt Sworn. Cloud9, strike first. Really well executed first blood. And they even force out the RTZ TP. Mm, Pi might die here. 
Do they have anything to turn this? Malefus on the Zai, looking for the Burrow Strike, but it's only on the Fauna. Pi loses a bunch of damage, but the Death Prophet ult quickly shreds one, and Arteezy tanking this will fall as well. C9, get first blood, get three, and, and then Envy will pause. pause. <laughs> and then disconnects. <laughs> yeah, you, you, <laughs> Wants you, to let EG usually, sit on that one for a little bit. Usually you don't take ultimate that early, but he got a kill on the, on the other hero, and he got his level, and he immediately skilled ultimate when the Razor was jumping on his teammate. It's good. a good thing he actually went treads as well. The tread swapping actually was what ab was able to give him the mana to be able to do all that. <laughs> it's quite nice. Yeah, the sideline yeah, death prophet doesn't have any mana regen. Small little place. It is the little things that add up, and yeah, wouldn't have he was he was not going to have his level six without that first kill. Yeah, t talking about side side lane death prophet, what do you go for that gives you mana? <laughs> hmm. Do you just rush yeah. like drums? Do you think or no talisman? Just build into the small parts that builds the use, maybe. <laughs> the Sage Mask. I mean, I guess the thing is Fada's getting that. He's getting the early farm. Like, he could complete a Null Talisman now, get a Magic Wand if he wants, and or just go straight towards the Yule Scepter. I think Drum is fine this game. Because, like, they don't really have any other natural Drum Carrier. And it'll, it'll help them when they bunch up together with at least four heroes once they get their mech. So Drum, mech, they'll be able to take towers quite easily in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Yeah, Drum is very helpful for the whole team when you're escaping from the the wall cry spend for the razor chasing exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. they EG have a lot of chasing power that's a really good point so guys we're about seven minutes in now score three to one obviously a big win for c9 uh, what what do you what do you expect from eg over like the next five minutes or so they they are dire side they do have one hero who's decent at taking rosh a bit later on in the spend but they're it's not like one of those winter you mentioned this yesterday that you noticed with eg they they love to go for like on the dire side their game plan is take Roche and go for more late game generally speaking and on the radiant it's win the lanes and be more aggressive and try to take towers early on. This game they are actually going for more lane presence. The heroes that are very strong in the lane, having the lich and having the razor. But I don't know, man. The lane so far is not apart from the razor's lane where he's beating the thinker. The the other lanes are not exactly doing super well. I think. Okay, Universe is farming a lot, but the Mirana's lane is not doing very well. Yeah. So, and, so you would be very concerned if you're EG right now? Yes. Yeah, I would, because think C9 has the much greedier lineup, and if you're not doing anything towards the Tinker, he's going to get his BOT by 10 minutes, 11 minutes. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of the times, I mean, not a lot really, because it doesn't happen too often, but whenever uh, this type of situation happens to Arteezy, like he's doing well in his lane, and then he TPs and goes for a gank, and then dies right after, it's actually usually pretty crippling on him. Because then now he yeah. doesn't have a TP up when he's back alive. Uh, he has to walk to another lane to go back and yeah, farm. It really not, sets not, him back. Not to mention it's a Tinker. The Tinker is so glad that that actually happened. <laughs> yeah, it gives him so much space. He's going to be able to farm multiple... What? Does he have any stacks here? No, he has two satyrs. He's Three. got an ancient stack. Mm, three stacks? Is it? Oh, no, it's two. It's two. it's two stacks. He missed the last stack, I think. He's got no jungle stack. But either way, I mean, yeah, that's so big for the Tinker there. And now, yeah, he's going to have so much space. And Arteezy will be a little uh, bit yeah. behind. He has his soul ring already. If he, yeah, I think he usually goes for so. Yeah, he's gonna go for soul ring first before he does the ancient stack. Yes, yeah, seven hundred, eight hundred gold now. It's so crappy too. Like that, they, they ported like him porting top actually caused Zai to die as well for just a shadow demon. So it's like a double negative. <laughs> yeah, when he potted in, he he must be yelling, "Let's go!" <laughs> yeah, and Zai's like right in that ballpark where you could see him getting a blink dagger in like the next four or five minutes if he's left unchecked, but. I think he had 1300 or 1400 right before he died. So, yeah, maybe yeah. even sooner than that. He he didn't have any stacks. I think he cleared the one big he camp earlier. The, yeah, he already cleared the big camp just now, the triple stack. But he has like golems and ogres here, so it's not yeah. very decent. <laughs> I was just about to say, oh, the golems. Zai, is, Zai is pretty sad right now. Yeah. And there was like, once he's... I was stacking the jungle and I got like two golems. Both sides were golems and I was so frustrated. It's the best. What do you mean, dude? the best. <laughs> that's, when, that's when you just abandon the game immediately. That's when you just go Midas. And when, when, when you're bad rider, it's not the best for you. <laughs> <laughs> and we're starting back. Yeah, and I mean, that is one thing worth mentioning, guys. I haven't, as far as Tinker picks go, like, we haven't seen many teams try to pick lineups that can gank him later on. I did see yesterday uh, in Southeast Asia Zeus. for Star Ladder, team went Spectre, yeah. but... Yesterday they went Zeus against the Tinker, so you can actually spot out the Tinker's position. I saw that. That was pretty pretty cool. Yeah, there's been some Spectre picks, but like, at least in this event, teams that give away Tinker like seem like they want to just win the laning stage. They don't want to like pick Storm or Bad or Clock and try and punish the pick later on. Yeah, like the thing is, going for Storm means you're also having a vulnerable laning phase. It's like the Tinker, you're a key hero. And it was yeah. a last pick Tinker, so it might have caught EG not completely off guard, but 
with little opportunity to respond to it. It's sad not to see Storm played anymore, but it's too, the smoke. too easy to gank. Here comes the smoke clock with level 6. They're gonna look for the sanking stacking. They know he's stacking, yeah, 100%. Oh, this is bad for Zai if he gets caught out here. Dropping the sentry ward. Easy, it's not an easy Q, though. Well, he's actually gonna walk forward towards them. He's painting. Pile I die walking around the other direction. Will not end up going for the disruption. And now reinforcements are nearby for EG. No that chain frost yet, though. You think? Do you think like the Sven would go for a blink again? He's saving up so much gold. Like, I the think same so. Build as Fear when yesterday. I mean, what are, what are your other options? Like you could go straight. I guess Mask of Madness. We've seen early BKB occasionally. Though it doesn't seem that like a great BKB don't, don't game. Don't think you want a death. Uh, you want a mass of minus against death offer game. Not sure though. Mm. What 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 are your other options? Like just drums, maybe, just some cheap stats. I'm I'm actually thinking you just go for the life drain, but don't complete the mass of madness, <laughs> so you can farm. <laughs> yeah, it will help the Sven's economy a bit, but they've slowed down Zai. So not only did Cloud Nine get the first the first blood and the three one advantage, but the, the key hero to turn these fights around in the mid-game will have to be the Sand King. They don't really have a, a great initiator unless Universe yeah. goes for the blink. So I, that's, yeah, just Universe a, might have to go the blink. the timing though, LD. Enigma has his mech, so they're going to be a lot stronger than EG now. EG has no no one that can build the super quick mech apart from the Razor. And I remember watching most of their games, they rarely build... They don't really like to build Razor. If RTZ plays the Razor, he, they don't like to get mech on RTZ. Yeah. For sure. This is just, I mean, I'm just concerned for EG right now. They can't really do, defend any of their towers, and I feel like they're going to lose a lot. I think they might lose even two towers bottom here, unless they, are, is, they do something to react. This is looking really bad for them, in my opinion, the situation they are in now. They're going to lose towers, and Tinker's going to get... Uh, yeah, his BOT is not far off. He's going to do... No, the Ancient Stacks have been done, but he's like 700 off. Yeah, and Universe, like, this is not a situation that a Sven and Lich are well equipped to handle. Throws a storm bolt to try and slow the push, but really not a very strong deep push ability. And with that long cooldown, that's nearly a tower down, and they're not just, they're not going to stop. They keep mm, on pushing RTZ in. He finds a haste rune, and he's still teleport is ready, so they might try to do something about them. Yeah, they know the death prophet ult is down. Black hole has just about cooled down. In fact, it is ready, and there's a mech. So I feel like he'd only go there if they dive the tower. Mm, I think they are not going to push after seeing the haste on the Razor. They even have a ward spotting him getting the haste, so I don't think they'll try to do anything funny about them. Overall, it seems pretty comfortable for Cloud9. They have their mech up, so they can have decent team fights, and just basically can apply pressure with the DP ult, and like you said, just key thing is create space so Tinker can just get his farm on in the Radiant Jungle. And there's no and towers he, down for EG. He's going to have his bots after he clears this Ancient. He's going to stack it one more and clear it, and he has his bots. Universe and picks up his blink now too. Yeah, this seems like an important timing smoke. for EG. Do they have a smoke? They need to smoke and try and get a pick off. It's morning now. Daytime. They're probably gonna go with Zai's blink too, because he's. I think he's gonna get this stack here. He'll get his blink, and oh, then yeah. they're gonna move he's... with the haste rune. Yeah, two hundred go off. Yeah, even with the pesky golems, I think he'll just about get the gold from the stack. Yeah, RTZ finished up his magic wand, and he's going for a bracer now too. So he's getting a little tanky. So they want to catch a fight pretty soon. Try to do something. I think they're just going to leave the mech to the Lich, I guess. It's going to be really long before they have it. Yeah, yeah. He, that's that's going to be like 10 minutes at least from now. Unless he gets a, a really good chain frost off. 10 minutes is probably that they have a good game, you know? 10 <laughs> minutes. Yeah, if they get some towers and get like a nice chain frost, maybe it's sooner. And just look at this little move by uh, Aoi. It's making sure that they are not stacking. Sends one, one idol to check out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they haven't had to blow... They, there hasn't been really much effort as far as stacking the Ancients go from EG. Yeah, Universe went top, didn't didn't get anything done, and TP's back to bottom with his blink. Now they're gonna try and fight. They have the Second Epicenter King. though available, and they will go in oh, on no, AoE 2000. They want to commit to this, but the defensive disruption keeps them safe, and that forces EG back from the fight. Two hero burrow in from Zai, bringing them low, but not facing off. Then the Chain Frost bounces, and Universe lives through this. He drops down to 60 health, but they can't end him. The Enigma just melted, Bone7 hooking in though, finds Zai in this fight, and well, doesn't have detection yet, there you go, they'll get the kill, but they may lose Bone7 as well, that's gonna be three heroes down for C9, and EG look for a fourth, pursuing Pile I Die, but they the good news is Envy didn't die at least. Yeah, they did it without Epicenter, he didn't have it skilled just now. Yeah, he's only level 7, and he didn't act, he maxed the Sandstorm he did, fully. He didn't skill it, he just didn't skill it just now. Yeah. He blinked stun and then during his stun he leveled up his sandstorm and used it really quickly. 
to get the maximum damage from it, I guess. It's gonna be it's gonna be fairly difficult, like for him not to get caught this game, because there's rockets to scout for him, poison from the shadow demon to scout for him as well, and Zai will have to find really good positions to jump, and yeah, smoke will help with that. To break the trees, you're not hiding anyway. Yeah, there's a lot of ways, and not to mention there's march to break your blink dagger. So, to me, it's a tough I'm game for Zai. I mean, as bad as that was, though, at the same time, like Envy's just getting all the space in the world during this, so. He's doing his Naga Siren type of creep skipping, we think. <laughs> oh, AUI 2000. Does have his mech ready, but he just drops almost instantly to the universe. Black hole? Ultimate turns with the black hole, then Envy will follow this one up, spamming the march on them, and universe, Zai, low, not dead yet though. They might be able to get the Tinker kill, that would be the big one. Envy will fall, and Arteezy with a double damage and just shreds Cloud9 a new one. Another three for one exchange. Maybe Bone Seven's the oh, fourth no. kill. He is! He TPs in and feeds Arteezy a triple. Well. And they're gonna lose Fada, perhaps. Perhaps? No, Fear didn't get him in the end. Was almost a team wipe. Yeah, but Feta at least got his team a tower. <laughs> last hit, he last hit at the tower, so... Something still good for them. That is... Well, right? Just when you think Cloud9 are like in a strategically... Go oh, they might even get the Courier. Well, it's just a Lich, so uh, that's not gonna be an easy Courier yeah. kill. <laughs> well, that, that would just be a gift. I think Arteezy's net worth actually doubled in the past three minutes. Tinker was ahead of Arteezy before that fight by like 400, I think. Well, that's, that's pretty insane. He's got his drum finished up. He's going to have his Ogre Axe now and he's going for a BKB. Yeah, so now he's that, actually he's pretty damn tanky. That that slowed down the Tinker's dagger by a huge margin. He was like 1.4, 1.5, and now he's back to 1.2. He could have been like very close to the blink already. Uh oh. He's, they might oh, lose no, he's, Envy he's here. Trapped. Oh, Envy. <laughs> that's and not that, a good place. That was so greedy. He, he ran up this hill yeah. and just thought oh, he could march seven, the just caught an arrow top, and he's gonna go down to Fear. Fear making yeah, plays, he almost found a kill earlier in the Death Prophet, will indeed get one now, and... EG suddenly just hit the kill switch. They won two th two fights in a row, they now get another additional two kills, and they take their first tower uh, of the look game. At universe, he's gonna maybe find the Shadow Demon. Ah, uh, he's dead. And yeah, they're penetrating right through into their base now. C9 is they're just getting run over. This is brutal. Momentum at its finest right here. Yeah, and it was like exactly like you guys said, as soon as they get the double blink, then just constantly go for kills. Do not let Envy sit back and farm, and and don't let them chip your towers with the Death Prophet ult. And C9 have not really seen the dire side of the map in a solid four or five minutes at this point. We've got, he's got Yules up now on the Death Prophet at the very least, as well as his uh, Treads Embracer. And they, they do still have the time, Tinker. They, they need the Tinker blink very badly now. He's been slowed down so much. And yeah. the jungle is occupied by the Enigma, so it's not a lot of space for him sometimes. The Enigma needs to farm as well, it's his KB or Blink or whatever he wants to build. That and second death was just so unnecessary there for Envy too. It's... Yeah, he's so greedy. He, he just does that every time, hoping that he doesn't get caught. But too bad. Yeah, like er earlier when he, he didn't die from it, but earlier, uh, you know, Winter, and you've talked about this in our previous cast, like, he'll just run up here and start cutting yeah. the waves, even before his he Blink. He does it every he just... time. He just magic bushed himself when he was trying to do the all three camps and he blocked two of them. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. That was it's so just sad. after the 16 minute mark and there's no camps left. And they, like, they do have uh, an ancient stack for him. That but was like 300 gold gone for him, something around those lines. <laughs> everything, everything out depth. He'd probably have the blink now if he didn't die that second time and did that stack right there. Yeah. And it he's might be another death. Uh, he's gonna try and defend bot and maybe get his blink from there, but the two gankers are going towards me though. Lucky for him. And Zai, he has skilled Epicenter now, and maybe the reasoning is that until you get Arcane Boots, you're, it's really hard to have full mana for the uh, combo. Sometimes people try to use the Epicenter too much when Baroshock is just his best ability. Yeah, and yeah. it just like the timing's working out better for Zai. Now he's definitely have, he has the mana for the combo, and on top of that, like he got the early maximum benefit out of the max Burrow Strike, so it works out well for EG. They're going to start to siege this bottom lane. They do have Sven Ultimate, so that is their main pushing tool here at this stage of the game. And you see Universe will go directly onto the tier 1 tower. And this is a big tower, guys, because whenever you talk about Tinker on the Radiant side, it's always about this triple camp rotation, but with that tower down, it's much more dangerous for Envy to get into his own woods. Yeah, they're gonna go for Rosh maybe now, since the map is open, or maybe not so quickly. They need to defend their lanes first, but I'd like to see a ward here now in the jungle, so that they can actually spot out the Tinker, <laughs> since they already penetrated the jungle of C9. Oh, well, C9 are actually trying to group up. 
Is this going to be a good opportune fight for them? They do have a strong 5v5, it seems, with March, the mech, level 2 black hole, if he yeah. can get it off. In that pulse as well. But EG have the double blink, and that's going to be the key for them. They're TPing inside. They are looking to defend this tower, and Envy will keep on spamming marches to try and prevent that EG initiation. There's a Stormbolt oh. on Feta. They follow up with Epi. Defensive disruption. No, I can't yeah. channel Epi, and then he just canceled it and ends up not being able to go in. So no Epi, though. I don't think Cloud9 saw that. They might not realize that it's not ready and, and play this one safer. just split pushing, though, in the meantime, bottom. Oh, yeah. There is a Marana in this game. <laughs> and Fierce has done some yeah, good work. They, the disruption was actually... He was just worried the arrow might come after the Swen stun, and he just disrupted the DP. But the, the Mirana was actually just pushing at bottom. <laughs> That was actually like, I thought Zai was going to channel there and just go in, but I thought he was actually going to get hit by a march. He was just on yeah, the edge it of was, it, and then... Yeah, it was really close. I yeah, think I he had the PPD same idea. Called. He's like, oh crap, I can't do this, but was just outside of range, it looked like. Yeah, and then I guess like, Peter must have said, like, don't fight this. There's no point in fighting this, like, since uh, Fear was only bottom, just split pushing. Like, they don't need to defend that tier one. It's not that important at that point in the game. Well, speaking oh, yeah. of fighting, uh, C9 want to, and they do spot out Zai here, but... Without the clockwork, they just—they don't really have anyone that can go around getting getting kills. Like, but EG is not too worried about getting ganked at this stage of the game. Yeah, and finally they're gonna get the opportunity to do rush because Spear was pushing bot and they need to deal with it. And now C9 is split up. It's the opening for them to do the rush. So it's the blink dagger into the mask of madness, and well, I guess the main question is, what's the next item? Is it a good? It AC, doesn't. AC, AC maybe or BKB. Yeah. BKB is like, uh, I don't know, meh. It's a bit meh. It's just, I think it doesn't do so much. Apart from the Tinker's nuke. Yeah, the blind. That's that's really about it. There's some magic damage, but it's not like because, that much. Because they are like triple core, he doesn't really need... Oh, here comes oh, the in. Blade mail's up on bone 7. Universe can't out attack him. He tries to. He just melts to the blade mail damage. Now RTZ purged and chased down by Fada. Looks like EG may lose two here. Moonlight Shadow not going to help him as they dust. Maybe it will. RTZ, they just back off and Rocket's coming in from distance. Pop the Aegis. Now they use the sand keyed up in the air. Won't be able to blink out of this arrow. Trying to turn the fight and protect the rest of EG. Well, they lose the Sven in the end and make their way out. But they also lose the Aegis and the tier one tower defended by C9. It's been a uh, back and forth game here already. I didn't realize I clicked on RTZ there and he has an Ags already. Ags, Ags drum treads. Quite farmed. And he's level 14. He's gonna have his level 3 ult soon. Yeah. They're gonna need 4 stuff though for the clock world. Sanking has to be the one to build the 4 stuff. Bitch is still struggling to build the mech. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we said 10 minutes. It looks like it might be more like 12, but... It was at 11 when we were talking about it. <laughs> it's a lich, you know? <laughs> what, what, what are yeah, you gonna it's do? It's a lich. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the main thing for him is just cancelling the black hole, as you mentioned. If, if only sacrifice gives you gold. Why does he have that second ring of regen? Hmm. Just a casual. Maybe, maybe we'll use it for a pipe later. I guess Man, he he's must even be. struggling for the mech. Oh, hook shot in on the mid lane. Bone Seven jumping on Arteezy here is stealing a lot of damage and has his ultimate available. But C9 bringing reinforcements. Then Universe blinks. It goes for the stun that defensive yules. Fada will dodge that. And EG have to back. Really quick reactions by Fada. That was Fata. the fastest yules I've ever seen in Holy my entire crap. life. He was like already ready for the Sven to jump in. Yeah. Was it just? Was I mean, they might have had vision the ward, from the ward. I think the ward spotted him. Yeah, that's why he could have reacted. Yeah, it had. But like he even blinked like melee range and stunned. That was impressive. Yeah, that was that was really sick. Universe will now back off to farm neutrals instead, and we'll work his way towards the next item. And, and you mentioned AC, and it seems like it serves a lot of purposes this game. Yeah, AC or hard? I think his role in the game right now is just to make sure that he's beefy, so the Razor and Mirana can actually do a lot of damage. He doesn't need to go for. I like, usually go for damage as Sven, but I think in this game, there's always an option for him to just be beefy, get a hard or AC, then the Leech armor on you. You're just not not gonna die quickly towards the. DP. Let the fun begin for Eternal Envy. He'll start cutting the waves here. <laughs> Blinks into the trees and then immediately TPs yeah. out. Fear already used an arrow earlier, wanted to get him, but just can't find him. Yeah, Do you think lead. AY will I die stop BKB? Oh god, yeah, Pi's gonna go down. Well, that, that's a dead strategy. <laughs> uh, sorry, you were saying, Fog? Uh, what do you think uh, AY will go through? Do you think just uh, the straight BKB or will he go for a blink I, I, earlier? I think BKB Lincolns maybe, yeah. no blink. BKB okay. Lincolns, so he, he can just cast his back hole. Yeah, that's what I was assuming. I was just wondering if maybe you'd seen him. Go I haven't seen him really play it so much, so hmm. not lately, at least. If he gets to that point, then there, there's actually there's nothing to stop the black hole, right? Because yeah, the chain frost will be blocked by Lincoln's. Yeah. If he BKBs first. 
Uh, some cleave yeah. that that can stop it. Some god strength <laughs> one cleave shot killing him. him. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe he's low when he brings in a VKB back hole and the Razor ultimate kills him. <laughs> yeah, something like that. It could be a couple of things. Well, we'll see if that level of damage is available, but Eternal Envy is beginning to find his farm. Get, gets the Dagon on. Oh, he's right there in the trees directly oh. next to him. This could. Well, he needs to Epi if he wants to go for that, but. With March right next to him, he won't be able to blink in. They need some anti tinker watts on the map. Yeah, get the cliff wards up, perhaps. What's like the best cliff ward to punish tinker? Are there certain particular ones that you guys like this a lot? Or? I like this one because envy is always like here or here. I don't know if you. I think it's like, I think it's this one, this one, and then like that bottom one, and then this left one. I think is the best one, and then like yeah, like this, this one, top this one. one. There's only like, there's only like four or five really really good ones to be honest. Okay. So those are those are the ones to take notes on. We'll see a death prophet BKB. So for on the other side for C9, BKB is is pretty good this game. There's a lot of nuke damage from EG. There's still some physical damage that will go through it, but blocking that initial sand cane stun, the Sven stun, or an epicenter is a big deal this game. Not to mention chain frost. Oh, Zai's going in. Epi, onto eternal envy, but Zai blinks into the oh, creep wave. Immediately retreats. Oh dear. Oh, that's you know, I don't know if EG will have a team fight, but this is where C9 might say, you know what, this is a good time for us to try and push our advantage. Yeah, he he, fight, he has his four stop anyway. He's going to have it in 50 gold. So nice. I don't think the epicenter wasted there was too much of a big deal for them since nothing is going on. He got like four creeps. Can I go there? So <laughs> shot in. Shot. Directed under TZ. Boy, they'd love to have the epicenter now to protect the Razor. There's still a good Burrow Strike that'll block AUI 2000 from further pursuit, but they lose the Arteezy Razor. And I think they would love to have the boss up there more than the epicenter. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eternal Envy's hunting PPD. This Lich is quite squishy. Sven blinks in. Stuns up two. Burrows through, but there's a nice defensive disruption that prevents the kill on I2000. Can turn with his ultimate potentially, but with wow. PPD there, he was worried about a chain for us canceling. Actually didn't have mana for it. And in the end, C9 lose three, only getting the Razor and just overextended yeah, it. I mean, the DP wasn't there. There was no way they had enough damage. Even if he wanted to black hole, there was no way they were going to kill them. That was so odd. They're, they clumped up and dove for a Lich under a tier 2 when they know that there's two Blink Daggers. That was a really, really massive misplay, in my opinion, from C9. And now they lose their Ancients. It's not a massive stack, but just further damage done to the C9 economy it's here. It's not a massive stack, but every small bit counts, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's like its universe is like BKB finishing up right there. That's pretty mad, pretty huge. Well, Fears, yeah, he has it in 200. Uh, they're all they're all really farmed actually. Fear's got Mjolnir and another 2500 now too. Yeah, and that's I mean, th you know, whenever a team builds Mjolnir, I always look like, do they have someone who's really good to carry, like to have the buff? And they've got the Sven. That is a and the Razor. Those are fantastic Razor too, yeah. to put it on. Yeah, Razor is the true lightning lord with that buff on him. <laughs> he just needs a oh, Zeus I, at his side. I did want to say something really interesting though. Um, it, like Arteezy is actually one of the few players I've seen do this. He got hooked and no, like he didn't panic at all. He starts killing the cog instantly and moving oh, away. Yeah. He was always something. killing the cogs. Yeah, the first time he saved him actually, when yeah. he got hooked here. Because yeah. people forget that it's now two hits. Yeah, two at hits. low levels. At level one is two hits. Level one and level two. Yeah, level only, one, only level two, level, level three. One. Only the last level is three Oh, hits. they're gonna run into the four-man smoke. Oh, then they find Zai too. He gets zapped immediately. Then Eternal Enemy blinks into the trees while Bone7 starts diving. He pushes Arteezy back towards the Death Prophet ultimate. Really nice Cog's placement. Even better Black Hole. That's three huge kills and King. immediately a Sand King buyback. They want to re-engage here, but they found another potential target with this disruption. Fear forced to leap away. The rest of EG kind of scattered. One to the north, one to the east, one to the west. They really can't fight anymore. And does C9 look for something? Roche is not up yet, so can't go for that. Mm, I think nice. they just farm. They they just farm the whole map with their heroes. Uh, I don't think they can actually take much objectives now. They're just happy that they can farm the whole map. And yeah, he, he is just—he's one step ahead of Zai. Blinks out, and Zai will try to blink. Oh, he actually gets him. Epicenter no, now available. Eternal Envy might be in trouble. This will be a huge kill for the Sand King. Finishes him off with the Sandstorm, and those last Epicenter ticks. He like he like ran in between March units and then blinked. <laughs> it's like it's like watching someone in the matrix almost. I was gonna say his buyback was not worth it and then he gets that kill. So oh, he gets another kill. Yeah he gets a oh, double kill. No maybe no, not Pilot does not have... The sentry is out of range. That was that was really uh, that was sick man. <laughs> I don't know like if he meant most... to dodge the machines but hey he did. It's like the most random buyback in the world and then he ends up getting that kill up there. That was I guess it, it must not have been random. Oh. I got a props like Zai's 
really good player, so. Fear. Looking for an, an arrow potentially for Pylai Die, but there's creeps in the yeah. way here. Won't find in the Rush top lane. Rush is up, though. This has been scouted out instantaneously by Bone7 and C9. We'll have their Tinker soon. Black Hole is down for 100 seconds, though. And oh, that will make this rocket? quite tough to contest. Oh, he almost blocked the stack. <laughs> Yeah, there was actually a, a Reddit thread recently about, like, because Admiral Bulldog was, I think, asking for the exact timings for different blocks, and I think someone went through at least his Radiant Clock and figured it out. Fear oh, taking some chip damage, but E doesn't want to fully go in on him. Do EG just He's... go for Roche now with the Black Hole down, do you think? Mm, it's still got a minute and a half. That, no, it's not that easy, though, because there's Clockwork Rocket up there, and in that position, the Tinker will do a lot of damage to you. That's like the worst place, I think, for EG to fight, probably, at this point. So they need to yeah. do, like get some kills and map control back before they do it. Yeah, probably. And e E's actually going for this maxing Dagon first. No ghosts up there at all yet. I remember someone wrote a uh, math on this. It's better to get Atero Blade first before you upgrade your Dagon, because Atero Blade provides more damage. Yeah, I mean, I've seen people upgrade. I don't know why, but I mean, I'm not really too much of a Tinker player anymore, but I see people upgrade it just once and then go for the Eth Blade, but... I've seen everybody go yeah, for Yeah, the rocket's gonna scout the Rosha. And the yeah. Rosha's dropping low. Bone7 looking for a hook shot in. He'll jump directly onto Cogs him in with the blade now, then almost dies, force staffing his way back out as Fado looks to engage. The courier's just running through the middle of this fight. Epicenter onto Fado will finish him off. Roche still alive through this. The courier actually survives, and the rest of C9 have to retreat. They lost the clock. Mm. The Death Prophet just melts, and without the black hole, it was just not enough damage to engage into this, nor enough lockdown. That AUI uh, falls as well, and they'll end up losing three heroes. Chain Frost he, just to secure the kill thrown out by he, PPD. He was deeping there. I'm not sure why. Yeah. Probably knew he was gonna die anyway. That was like As a I was saying, shit. that's like the worst place for EG to fight. I mean, if they, the, the, the only reason I was saying is that because of all the vision that C9 has up, so I was figuring they would actually be able to get the sanking before he just blows up Fada, or Fada would get his BKB off, but he didn't even get BKB off. He just got completely bursted. Yeah, and that's, I mean, the, the, the thing was that about that fight was like, they weren't ready when Bone7 actually went in. The Enigma was still here. He was still here. And they went in. So his team wasn't actually there to build in. Build in he, he hooked in, bossed out, and died. To the they were too slow to react, I think, initially to getting there. They should have just given it up or made the decision to go sooner. Yeah, it, it did seem like a very awkward position. And, and at that point, like once one, one, once your key initiators die, Tinker just can't really do anything in the fight. He's yeah. gotta, there's got to be a black hole or, or cogs with the Death Prophet there to follow up on that damage. Well, EG now, once again, just it seems like outplaying C9 in, in the fights in quite a few cases with better positioning and just quicker reactions. Yeah, and I don't know, I feel like Bone7 now at this point has like his entire the timing of like being able to do anything is gone. I'm not seeing him being able to do anything. Yeah, he's much not in this game. very useful anymore. I think in the fights, he's gonna just have to try to trap the Sven inside the cogs and just force off all, all the time. That's like one of the best yeah. things he can do right now. There's nothing more he can do. Yeah, but May maybe the, maybe maxing the Dagon is it? Do you think it's the primary reason because they have slow catcher on their team? Is it that hmm. that's the reason why? Um, I mean, maybe he just doesn't see the Ghost Scepter really benefiting him in any way because of the lineup that he's versus? I, I'm not really sure. I mean, it's it's kind of weird seeing it. Because I feel it, like he's just It's so a little squishy. easier to build up, but like at least getting the Ghost Scepter is pretty affordable. The the tough part is farming the, the Eagle Song. So sometimes we see players just get like the casual Ghost Scepter, then max the Dagon, but... Yeah, I mean, it could be, it really could be because of the Soul Catcher. That's a pretty good yeah. point. The Soul Catcher would buff the Dagon so much, and if you look at their lineup C9, the only burst, the biggest burst they have if they want to kill someone instantly is the Dagon. And it is a max everyone soul catcher has, here, which we don't yeah, always everyone see. Else, everyone else does damage over time. They don't instantly kill something. Mm -hmm. And AY actually does opt for the Blink Dagger, so Blink BKB up on him now. Yeah, a little bit more reliable initiation, and on the back of that pickup, C9 yeah. want to try, try to force a fight. Uh, they, I think they saw Zai in the trees. Um, Zai has revealed them now, and Universe is hiding oh, in the pit. He's got picked up his Hyperstone. Eternal Envy jumping forward onto Zai, and will rearm, but doesn't really want to commit that far in. They've had bad experiences near this tier 2 the last time they went for it. And now against the Lincoln Sphere on Still Fear. went for Lincoln's. Huh. Hmm. Didn't expect that. Just thinking maybe more damage or Skadi. It's going to make it harder for the Tinker to burst him yeah, in these it's, fights. it's just for the Tinker. Well, EG in a good position here now in terms of in terms of economy. Up by about seven seventy five hundred gold. 
experience gap is just gargantuan, and we can see that reflect in the hero levels. They've got four of the top five. And this is with C9 having three core. Uh, it's a Lich as well. Lich provides a lot of help in that matter. Yeah. I feel like I haven't seen Death Prophet do anything since the top lane fight <laughs> at the beginning of the game. <laughs> I mean, he's taken out a few towers, but they haven't been able to even touch these tier twos after the, their uh, their wipes. Yeah, I mean, the the biggest chance for him to do something was the Roche just now, where he didn't pop his BKB on time. Just like... yeah, exactly. It's I mean, it's just weird because like C9 doesn't uh, they lack that hero in the front now because the clockwork's just so weak and everyone everyone else everyone's just so squishy at this point. And even if like he yeah. does catch the Sven, Sven just BKBs and kills him. Uh, maybe yeah. four and steps out, but he's like one one point five k HP. He's gonna die very fast. Oh, there's an arrow. Eternal MB almost blinks back into it. It ends up clipping Pilai die way behind. Wow. The tower. That would have been big. That would have been really big. That could have been a, a game ending arrow. He doesn't have buyback. It's like a matrix arrow. <laughs> yeah, first we saw Zai dodging through the march, and then Eternal Envy. Get so so good at catching arrow. arrows that he blinks back oh. into it. Do you guys remember that game where Sing Sing like, jumped oh. back into an arrow that the he had TA, successfully dodged? Yeah, the TA here. I remember that, that video. Yeah, it was like right here. <laughs> Mistakes are made. His tweets afterwards were really funny. He was <laughs> really good at catching arrows, basically. But Yeah, so guys, I guess the question is, obviously C9 not in a great position right now, and seems like they don't have much momentum. What's what's the game plan? Just farm your Tinker? What do you do? Yeah, just hope to go for a super late game where yeah. the Tinker gets a lot of items. Just the only play right now left for them, because like in the late game situation, they have a lot of ways to lock down the Mirana and the Sven with the Black Hole and the Purge and the Power Cog, so the Tinker and the DP would be able to deal a lot of damage to those heroes. Fog, do you agree with that? Just just farm Tinker and avoid fights? Unless they're like super favorable? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't I don't really see them being able to come back so much in this game. Just because, uh, I mean, Death Prophet, you don't want to be a Death Prophet who is this behind at this point. You're just, you die so quickly. He's 1500 HP, like... Even if he gets yeah, caught by like a little bit of spells really in the side, bad. he's gonna die. It's really bad though, the situation of DP in right now. You just, even with the BKB, you feel very weak to, yeah. to those right clicks. Not to mention like hero matchup wise. We talked about in the draft, we haven't really discussed it much recently, but there's Frost Armor now, as well as a Max Warcry, and soon Sven's, the Universe Sven is gonna have Assault Caress. So even if you do get get your ult off for a while, like, it doesn't hit that hard. Even the Zai's walking around on 19 armor, Arteezy's got 21 before the war cry. You add 16 armor to all these heroes. It's the Tinker's really their only damage dealer right now, it feels. Yeah, and then it's a Mjolnir and Lincoln's Razor. Bone 7 will hook in, he finds PPD, the Lich in the trees, vacuums him into the cogs, he just explodes with the blade mail there, but Eternal Envy gets jumped by Universe, he gets ganked hard, and, and they give really up the Tinker. He, he really hope that he has a ghost after that. Oh my Seriously. goodness, Universe just shredded him. Ouch! That is not. That's like oh, free lich kill. That's great. And then I didn't even get to pan my camera in time. He died so quick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if he had a ghost after, there was a chance he might survive there. It, when he, the moment he saw the swim blink, he just popped the ghost after. He might not die. I think he. I think he had time at the end. He turned and almost looked like he was lasering. Yeah. I caught you know, the I, last, I, last second. I feel having the ghost after would have probably saved him there. Well, Sven does have BKB though. So I guess he could BKB off the laser and. And just keep our no, I mean, looking. Uh, yeah, I but mean, yeah, that's go scepter. You're gonna leave. You just wait for your. Oh, if he has to... go scepter, yeah, 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 that's true. I don't know. I just feel the go scepter is a very good investment, cheap and good investment. Even if it saved you just one time, just because of it, I think it's worth it. The other Did you thing... see him dagging dagon five that lich in the soul catcher? Though? <laughs> Man, <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> that was painful to watch. Uh, then that is die. a max soul catcher. He maxed it first yeah, over I mean, the disruption. He was gonna die when he had like a 600 Dagon, I think. Doesn't really matter having an 800 Dagon. That, that is a really good combo, but it's just like you look at Pilai die with a 4 staff and 900 health. He really, it's hard for him to find a good opening to get into soul catcher position. Like he's mo it seems he's mostly gonna have to be kind of reacting to EG, not aggressively yeah, jumping someone. It it's very difficult when everyone has so much movement speed on EG. Imagine when they are around the leap aura and plus the wall cry, they are all mostly close to max movement speed. And C9 now find themselves somewhat pinned back considering their lineup. They haven't taken any tier 2s with a Death Prophet Enigma. An AUI 2000 had his customary fast start, but... You know, Yannis, like you said, they just... They haven't really done much with the Death Prophet, and now it's gotten to the point where... 
Fada just can't get in close. There's just too much. Even Fear's about to hit hard. He's got 4,400 uh, gold. I think they were having the momentum before that. Like Yanni said, after the middle fight where they chased the Lich and they got blink, double blink by the Sign King and Sven, the whole momentum swung towards EG. Yeah. Like, bottom was bad, but it was forgivable because Tinker was farming. Then mid was just completely unforgivable. It was just a diving for a Lich. Just, if you really think about it, there's no purpose. Yeah, he's almost like a position 6 hero in terms of his importance in this lineup. If, if the Lich has a gem at that time, maybe it was understandable. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, even then. <laughs> very very kind of defensive build here from Fear, with the Lincoln Sphere and the Manta style, but... Uh, it does mean he's going to be extremely difficult for C9 to track down in the fights. So... Maybe the Lincolns was all the while not for himself. Like, For example, he puts the Lincolns on the Sven, and Sven pops PKB. The Shadow Demon cannot push the Sven. So maybe that's the reason as well. Look at this. Arteezy's picked up a hex. Yeah, I've seen him do this. Quite what's often. what's the what's the reasoning? Just so you can kill the tinker? Well now they've got another instant lockdown for the uh for like Death Prophet. If he just runs at the Death Prophet and hexes him, then the two blinking other guys can just follow up with stuns and he's dead. And they ha they have so much more damage right now than C9 unless Tinker gets off multiple uh, yeah, rearms. Yeah, there they go. So on seven hooks so in, Roche dropping low. He might be a bit too early once again. The rest of the team's reinforcing him. Fada did get off his BKB and the Roche nearly dead. Nobody going in for it. And they'll just give EG the Aegis picked up by the Razor. Now the Black Hole in AUI, but cancelled by the PPD Chain Frost. Eternal Envy's trapped on the high ground. He tries to TP out. Looks like he'll make his way out safely. Universe still being kited here. Will end up dropping and EG now have to turn this one and fight with round two. Arteezy comes back, and with the BKB steals all of Fada's damage and tries to finish him. They still have fear alive for this, and they pursue farther, looking for additional kills. Zai a few seconds late. And that mm -hmm. side of Vice, I think, saved the fight. He could have potentially dropped his cogs and pushed someone on the cliff, and that would have been really bad. Yep. That was, that was better than expected for C9, but not sure if it was good enough. They do uh, get rid of the Aegis immediately. They killed Universe it twice. But... Yeah, it was Aegis and the kill on the Sven, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. And the Tinker did not die. He ended up TPing out. Like, they had Vision, but... You could see how easily the Sven is controlled if they get the Purge on him. They, they purged him, and then Death Prophet's just running yeah. running around that's, him with the Shivas. That's, that's why I'm thinking. I'm thinking he puts the Lincolns and the Mjolnir buff on the Sven. And the Sven just BKBs and runs in, and only the Black Hole and the Hookshot can actually stun him. I think that was one of those moments for Sven where I would have probably just put my hands in the air off the keyboard because he's just Shadow Demon purged inside of March and Midnight Pulse. <laughs> <laughs> Midnight Pulse, yeah, and that, and that is a, an important tool here against the high armor of EG is not just Eternal Envy's magical burst, but the Mid the, the pure Pulse. damage coming out from that as Ridic well. Ridiculous ability. Yeah. It's painful. And it's going to scale well even if this goes really late. Pain painful is not even the word, man. He goes through BKB. For some reason. <laughs> it's one of yeah. three spells in the game that do, I believe. March, that, and Doom. Uh, I think those are the only three. And it's probably late. the Earthshaker ultimate, and then the Elder Titan ultimate. Does the yeah. damage go through with the Elder Titan ult? Uh, yes. Elder Titan ulti ultimate has two sorts of damage. Spell and, I think, composite. So the, the spell one doesn't hit you if you have BKB, but the other damage hits you. Gotcha. Composite damage. That's right. And then Earthshaker to the Echo Slam damage is... Yeah, the first wave It's the damage. first one, not the, yes. the bounce, right? You can Echo Ancients, remember? <laughs> you can Echo Roshan. Okay. It's not too efficient, but you can do it. Something that you'll you'll normally reserve for when the game's either completely lost or completely won. And nowhere in between. <laughs> well, we now head towards a, a extreme EG advantage. 14,000 gold, 30,000 experience, full map control, well, not full, but I'd say, like, the majority of map control. And considering they're up against the Tinker, if you have the lanes even, then you have to feel good at this stage in the game. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, still, Eternal Envy is no, no shotgun, no Ethereal Blade, even 42 minutes in. It's not very rich, but they have to... Re I mean, I don't think they can rely on the shotgun to win the game anymore. The the biggest weapon they have now is just the Black Hole. If they can just win a team fight with a very good Black Hole, then they can come back into the game. I've been sitting here just thinking for things that go through BKB. <laughs> Techies Mines, Wild Axes from all Beastmaster. Berserker's right, Call. <laughs> I'm done. Berserker's Call. <laughs> <laughs> well, C9 now. Moving epicenter up. Epicenter Slow. Epicenter Slow goes to BKB. <laughs> Alright, there's a million actually. 
This this could be a very boring cast if we try to list them all out, guys. Clockwork Cook. All right, top section got my kick on on here. Oh, they will find Arteezy with this hook shot to initiate, and he gets pushed back in once again by Bone7 in good position with that. But the backups arrive from Universe instantly connects for the double kill. Now working on Fada and making mincemeat of him with these chops. The Ghost might turn this though. Trapped in the trees, Fada will drop down, and just one more right click would do him in. He's hexed by Arteezy and now can't make his way out. He's trapped in the corner and caged, and will end up falling. They lose all but the Clockwork. I think that was, oh my god, almost like the seal in the coffin already, that fight. Did they lose a gem as well? I think I saw a ping uh, on the gem. I think so, I think so. Shadow Demon was holding a gem, if I'm not mistaken. And that was a 6,000 net worth swing. I, I mean, the gold is one thing, but to me it's... Does he not even have buybacks at this point? Well, they have they do. buyback, but the problem is the Enigma. Like I said, the only way they can win a fight is just on the Enigma BKB back home, but he doesn't have BKB now. Good luck Dodo. Off. He just walked up and two-shotted the Tinker. That was pretty funny. Yeah, Turn on has gotten caught a lot this game. I mean, considering there's there's not like a, a natural predator, I guess you would say, and the, the Storm and the, the Batrider, Clockwork, these types of heroes, he's really struggled to stay stay alive in fights. I, I consider Bling Dagger a natural predator of That's Stinker. true. Well, in that case, everyone's a natural predator of Tinker, but it <laughs> doesn't often work out that way. EG are just doing a great job of focusing him in the fights, and it seems like Universe in particular is, you know, he's just doing a little bit more on, on the hero than what you normally expect from Sven. Sure, he hits hard, but it's not like he's, it's the Storm Bolts that have been impressive. Like, yeah, it, hitting hard is one thing, but hitting the right target is another thing. Yeah, and you yeah, only exactly. get one shot with Sven. There's no like, oh, I missed, you know, I can it's, try again. It's, it's, it's super nice though the way that the, this actually ended up panning out for EG. Like, is they like Fear was having trouble in the beginning, and then Zai once they get their blink daggers on Zai in Universe, Zai makes like a big play, and then the other two are able to come back and make big plays. So it's uh, just like Italy. they're ready to jump in here. Mask of Madness is available. Fado will get caught out with the storm bolt. Then the follow up from Zai four stepped away, but I don't know if that's enough from Bone Seven. Now the Yule Scepter on the Death Prophet comes back down. BKBs and Shivas, but no BKB now. Ready if EG want to continue pushing in. Well, they stay alive for the time being. But again, you see the threat that EG pose. And he's so squishy. I think there was like three, four hits at most. Three hits. And he was already almost dead. You know, 45 minutes in, we've seen Death Prophet's six slotted, basically. Like, your heart's up at this point. Yeah, um, Heart Shiva, Yields, BKB, and even sometimes one more item, maybe a, a top lane. Oh, they found Eternal Envy again. The Hex is really giving him trouble. And Arteezy just slashes his old buddy down. No mercy. I this mean, what my big, th my big thing for Death Prophet, at least. I don't know if everybody does consider this, but I like, I really like her in the mid role, just because of the fact that she is constantly getting those levels. I mean, sure, she got those levels from the kills top, but it's, I don't know. I feel like it's still just not enough, and he's just. Yeah. I feel like it's set him back. No, there's, there's also one more reason. I think you were talking about like the DP. You didn't feel she did so much, but one of the major reasons I think was also because, because she didn't have a bottle, she can't control rune. Like sometimes as a DP you get a haste, so you get like an invis rune, you can do a lot with it. But because yeah. she was like on the top lane, she can't have access to runes. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good point as well. Yeah, C9 in general just didn't have a draft that uses the runes particularly well. And now EG want to end this game one and, and needing to win two BO3s today. They've got a lot of work still ahead of them, but they'll take the top rex. Well, at least bringing it low here with the Razor, while mid lane is just brought down by fear. Universe jumping in directly onto Bone7, they double stun him. Then the Yules is thrown out on the Sven to try and keep him alive, and Universe begins pursuit. He's BKB'd and chases Bone7, decides it's not even worth it. Let's take objectives. Fear can collect the kills, but it's all about the Rex here. They'll lose the melee Rex as well, two lanes down in a matter of instants, and everybody from EG just calmly backs out. One more good push in, and, and that'll They're probably go be again. three lanes of Rex. Yeah, fake back. Here it goes. Moonlight Shadow's ready, and remember, Fada, they lost their gem out. in the last fight. They need detection to stop this. Fada's just on the verge of getting caught out by the Sand King. Uh, close. That was close. They know what's going on. And they just don't have the item progression. Like, Eternal Envy just... It still doesn't have his Ethereal Blade at 47 minutes in, and it's not just him. The Death Prophet doesn't really have that much farm. These heroes just aren't tanky enough against EG's burst. We look at Sven late yeah. game, he hits like a truck. Yeah, and, and and something that people don't really consider, even when Tinker gets Eth Blade, if he ever uses that on Razor, you don't even have the Ghost Scepter effect. It just removes it instantly. Yeah, and yeah because still of able the to get passive. Well yeah, the yeah. passive. Like people forget that Razor's actually. I mean, it does a lot of decent amount of damage, but it purges the Tinker a lot, so it's quite strong. 
And it's not a hero that you can ignore at this stage of the game. Like, you ignore the Razor, he's killing one of your teammates for sure with the BKB uh, hex. You kinda ignore the Razor when he has the Zeppelin on your tower, man. Oh, now he's double Zeppelino. So. Oh, lovely. How lovely. Double Zeppelino. I gotta go clean my face and wash my eyes so I can... Triple Zeppelino with the Muni, with the buff on him. Yeah, for anyone, for anyone who's prone to epileptic seizures, please avert your eyes for the rest of this game. We don't want anyone dying just to watch uh, EG win, but I guess that's I mean, the it, real way to bleed blue. It wouldn't be so bad if the golden razor helmet as well wasn't already giving me an epileptic seizure. So yeah, I but do look like at the, it. I do like the golden static link though. That's kind of cool. Yeah, but look at that helm. It's so spastic. The severing crest. Well, the severing crest will be used to try to decapitate C9 here. Hookshot was a, attempted by Bone Seven, but didn't find anyone. And now Arteezy will wrap towards the top lane. He's painting out the, the the huts. They're just trying to spread this one out a bit, it looks like. Now they jump on seven. Trapped in by a burrow strike. Then the Sven just goes to work. Chops down some wood. And gets an early kill. Well, Yule's eternal envy here and force him back. There's just no hurry here for EG. They've used one one Razor ultimate. They've got a second one available. I imagine Arteezy's going back in soon. You can see Cloud9, like, the safe zone is really far back. Double ultimate now for Arteezy. Black Hole will be there, but insta-canceled once again by PPD. And EG just run him over. That's going to be Fada down. It's GG for Cloud9. And for all the everyone on Arpana who is predicting EG to take both best of threes, they're off to a good start here. Oh, yeah, I mean, I didn't even think C9 was going to do so well in the early game. Just because I didn't really... I don't I don't see who was going to make yeah, all the space, uh, like... I was confused. The, 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 the thing, it was like, they had a greedy draft and we were worried that EG didn't have a good start and C9 had a greedy draft and they, it went yep. really well for them. But until the midpoint, actually, those mistakes made it, they were supposed to be in a really good position. I think Those two blinks just, I guess, kind of caught C9 off guard a little bit. I'm not sure. Well, guys, with that being said, that wraps up game one. There are potentially two best of threes coming your way, so it could be a long night if EG win this one. I'm LD. I'm joined here by Fog de Winter. We're going to take a quick break from the WEC Grand Finals, but when we return, we'll have a little bit of a analysis from our panel, and then we'll hop into game two. So stay tuned. You're watching Beyond the Summit.